realize uh, that that was an accurate statistic, but half of the people who lose weight on the liquid diet gain it back within 18 months? 18 months, and now statistics are showing that probably 95% gain back the weight they lose within five years. What goes wrong? Well, what goes wrong is the same that goes wrong with any diet program. This 95% figure has been around for 30 years, and what we seem to be missing is the answers to the question of how to get people to change their lifestyles in such a way that they can keep the weight off. Uh, I'm not surprised that everybody in the audience is, is, is touting a particular diet that's helping them. In fact, we've been having successful diets for, for a long, long time. The trouble is we don't seem to be paying enough attention to the problems of people in maintaining a positive lifestyle change. In many ways, I think these people are like addicts, drug addicts in a way, in the sense that we have bad habits that keep coming back. They creep back. They come back into our lives. We don't really know why they're coming back. We don't control them well and eventually we find ourselves falling back into the same old patterns of habits that we had before. You know, my specialty is the treatment of addiction. Mm -hmm. And I've read that you've said that it's actually, uh, a, a drug addict is actually probably more likely to stay off drugs than it is for a dieter to keep the weight off. That is actually correct. You know, the reason for that is because the science of addiction treatment has always been around long-term behavior change. We've been concerned about that since uh, the 1920s when the 12-step program first emerged. We've always been concerned about how can you help people make change in their life for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. The dieting industry, its main concern has always been get the weight off and then people will just be fine. And you know, Oprah of course came on a year after she lost 67 pounds and said, hey, guess what? When I got into the size 10 jeans, I thought that was the end. I would be that way for the rest of my life and it's not that way, gang. She's gained back 17 pounds and, and this is what happens to most people. Now, with a, uh, a liquid diet plan, doesn't that teach you to, to live without solid food, without real food? Well, it doesn't really teach you that. It's, it's a mechanism. It's the technique of the diet. These diets are for morbidly obese people, people who are 100 pounds overweight or 100% over ideal body weight. They really have a tough time losing a significant amount of weight on a low-calorie diet. Think about it. If you're losing a pound a week and you have 150 pounds to lose, that's 150 weeks. Yeah. So these are godsend for some people. Of course, they have to be medically supervised. We need to always say that because there are dangers to be on these very low-calorie diets. I should make that distinction for you. Liquid diets are not necessarily very low calorie diets, which are 500 to 800 calories a day. These are the ones where people require continual medical supervision throughout the dieting phase and during the refeeding phase. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a pretty radical diet where you go on a fast with these liquid diets. Isn't it better to lose weight over slow, slowly over a long period of time? Ideally, yes. Ideally, it is better. But as I just said before, can you, go, can you be on a low calorie diet for 150 uh, uh, weeks? Most people find that very difficult to do. And it, it really, these people have serious um, physical problems, hypertension, heart disease, gallbladder disease. We've been hearing about, a lot about that lately, that these diets can help them alleviate, and diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, within the last couple of weeks, I heard some lady testify on Capitol Hill that she lost 34 pounds and her gallbladder. You know, in these last couple of weeks, I've been feeling very sorry for the American consumer. We've gotten two very conflicting messages uh, from the media. One was, dieting is dangerous. This is the new thing that's coming out now. It's a very hot topic, that dieting is dangerous. At the same time, the study in the New England Journal of Medicine is telling women that to live the longest and not get heart disease or angina, you have to be below ideal body weight, the same message the fashion industry has been giving them. Now, that study really only had a few people that got these symptoms, and I'm a little worried that people are going to take this uh, study to heart too much and begin to believe that they have to be a, a model thin to live the longest life. But the messages are very conflicting. And yes, indeed, people are uh, complaining of gallbladder problems when they lose weight rapidly. For your money, what, uh, what is the bottom line here? The bottom are line, they good for you? Are they bad for you? They are. It's definitely good to reduce body weight, especially if you're significantly overweight. The, the medical gains from that are great. And let's be honest. Let's talk about the psychological gains. We live in a society that's prejudiced against people who are overweight. I doubt that that's going to change. It'd be nice if it could change. It'd be nice if a lot of things in this world could change. Mm -hmm. That probably won't change. And it's a little bit easier to be uh, at, at a reasonable body weight in the society than to be overweight. Uh, in that sense, it is a positive gain. If it's properly medically supervised and if you uh, take the right precautions when you're dieting, they're really not that dangerous. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful, though. There's more. Uh, we're still learning. We're still learning. I've been actually making a lot of phone calls in anticipation of coming on this show today regarding this gallbladder problem. And we're still investigating and trying to understand why people are developing uh, gallbladder problems, even on balanced, cal balanced low-calorie diets as well as these uh, liquid fasts. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Welcome back, folks. Well, we're talking with Dr. Philip Sinekin about the dangers of liquid protein diets. I've got a question for you. Are they addictive? Are they addictive? Yeah. The diets, per se? Reports are coming out, and there was an article in the New York Times this week about people um, 
feeling afraid to go back to food. And I don't really think it's addictive in that sense, but my concern is that people are beginning to see it as a coping mechanism, uh, something that can save them from uh, the dangers of food. And that's really a bad way to look at things. You know, food is a natural part of our lives. We have to learn to live with all foods, by the way. And I would answer to the lady who, asked a qu who mentioned her diet before. You can't live without chocolate ice cream and chocolates and cake. You have to learn to incorporate in them into your life in such a way that you don't overindulge in them. All right. Now, uh, Philip, we have some people with us who have tried liquid diets. Right here, we've got Wendy. Stand up, would you please? Here's Wendy Bitterson. She's from Warren, New Jersey. You're 22 years old. And uh, tell us about your diet plan. I was on OptiFast Opti for six months, and I lost 80 pounds. And within six months, I gained it all back. And every pound? Every pound. Within six within months? Within six months. Um, I feel as though I set myself up from the beginning. Uh, obviously, I couldn't stick to... Uh, um, a diet before that and then after I um, got off the liquid there's a refeeding phase and you're supposed to eat you know um, a thousand calorie diet mm -hmm. and I couldn't stick to it and yeah. then eventually I just gained all the weight back and now I've started um, ultra slim fast where it's liquid and I can also eat. Now Wendy why do you think the ultra slim fast is going to work where the last one didn't work? Well I think because also I'm eating the one meal and I'm making the lifestyle change which I think is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Now doctor is this common where somebody will start with one diet it doesn't uh, work long term and then they move on to another one? Certainly is. Else? Certainly is. What do you think keeps the dieting industry a 29 billion dollar a year industry? People are going from diet to diet. I call it diet shopping. In, in my program uh, After the Fast, the, a book I've written called After the Fast and in this program I recommend people work more on shaping the behavior changes they're going to need to do for the rest of their lives that have a lot less to do with going on diets and it has a lot more to do with uh, exercising, Steve. That's really the bottom line still and it's still the, people are more willing to go from one diet to the next than they are to focus on developing a daily exercise program mm -hmm. and I recommend daily exercise. Now we've talked about the physical ramifications of the program. Are there psychological problems that can come along with this kind of roller coaster, weight loss, weight gain? Well, self-esteem is the big issue. First of all, being overweight in America does not exactly build self-esteem. Even when you lose weight, your self-esteem does not necessarily recover. Many people still see themselves as fat, see themselves as unattractive, and sometimes have a very difficult time adjusting to the world's response to them. In some ways, they expect the world to fall over and just uh, lay at their feet because they've lost the weight. In other ways, they feel that the world still sees them as unattractive. Both of these things need to be worked on. These are some of the extra concerns that go on why people relapse off of uh, their maintenance program and go back into binge eating because they really aren't happy with themselves yet, even mm -hmm. though they've lost a lot of weight. All right, now we've got a lot of people here on diets. Who's got questions for Philip? All right. Yes, ma'am. You want to stand up? Yeah. Um, what's your name? Suzette. Suzette, what's your question for Philip? I would like to know, shouldn't you exercise as well as dieting? Wouldn't you lose more weight that way? Actually, exercising does uh, increase weight loss, not as much as you think it would. But exercise definitely increases the, the likelihood of maintaining your weight loss. Plus, exercise enhances self-esteem, and exercise enhances your general overall fitness and health. The main thing I would recommend is that you exercise because it's good for you, not because it's about weight. Very good. All right. Thank you, doctor. Yes, ma'am? Hi. The article in the Times made a reference to the fact that a lot of people who had been on diets for a long period of time, after they were done, they found they had cravings for things that they never really wanted to eat before. If they didn't eat red meat, they wanted steak. If they didn't eat a lot of candy and sugar, they wanted sweets and ice cream. Is there any scientific basis for this? Is this up here? Because I had this problem, and I was never a sugar eater, and now I look at candy bars, and they scream at me. What so, you, and and what do they say? Eat me! <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure whether here? this is some chemical thing that happened over the course of my relearning my eating habits or whether it's up here thinking that I'm not supposed to eat them anymore and I'm trying to convince myself to eat them. Well, first of all, you heard that I recommend that you not do that to yourself. Secondly, there's not really a physiological basis that I'm aware of for developing cravings for other foods. However, I find this even in drug addicts. They'll come in for treatment of cocaine, they'll sit around hearing about heroin, and they start thinking, gee, I'd like to try some of that before I stop using drugs. It's terrible, but these things can happen. It's, it's denying yourself food. You have to find a lifestyle that doesn't make you feel deprived. Very good. Philip, thank you very much for stopping by. Thanks for Once having again, me, his name, Dr. Philip Sinek, and his book is called After the Fast. Thanks for stopping by the house party. Stick around, folks. We'd like to thank you for your questions.